In beginning chapter 6, section 1, Roots of Real Numbers, we'll begin by talking about square roots. A square root of a number b is a solution to the equation x squared equals b. Every positive number b has two square roots denoted by these symbols, which we'll pronounce as the square root of b and the opposite of the square root of b. The number 0 has just one square root, and that is itself, which is 0. Negative numbers don't have real number square roots. And the principal square root is what we call its non-negative square root, and that's donated, denoted by this symbol, the square root of b. And when we want the other one, we will use the notation we introduced before, the opposite of the square root of b. Uh, for vocabulary, it's important that you know that this symbol is called the radical sign. An expression written with a radical sign is called a radical expression. And the expression written under the radical sign, anything that's under the radical sign there is called the radicand. The radicand. So we need to start by simplifying the square root of 16, for example, 1a. And we're asking ourselves the question, what number times itself 2 times is 16? The answer to that is 4. We know they wanted the principal square root by the notation that we use. There's no opposite symbol out here in front of the radical sign. Now, in this case, we are looking for the other root. What other number times itself would give us positive 16? Well, in this case, 4 times itself is 16. Take the opposite of 4 is negative 4. And to look at fractions, the square root of 1 16th, what number times itself is 1 16th? Well, let's look at the numerators. 1 times 1 is 1. 4 times 4 is 16. So 1 4th is the square root of 1 16th. For decimals, what times itself is 16 one hundredths? So we're looking for the square root of 16 one hundredths. And that would be 4 tenths. To check your answer, remember when you multiply 0 0.4 times 0 0.4, you get 16. You add the decimal points together, and there's one place and a second place, and that gives you the two decimal places that we started with. All right, find the real roots for each equation. If there are none, tell us there are none. Let's start out by solving this particular equation, x squared equals 25. To do that, we want to undo the squaring. And what undoes squaring is square rooting. So we'll square root both sides of the equation. It's important we know that the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. And the square root of 25 is 5. And the absolute value, remember, we have the positive 0 case and we have the negative case. So in the positive 0 case, remember, we just dropped off the absolute value signs and solved. In the negative case, remember what was in the absolute value we're taking the opposite of, and we solve that. So if the opposite of x equals 5, positive x must equal negative 5. And so our solutions are positive 5 and negative 5. Remembering the fundamental theorem of algebra says whatever our exponent is, that's how many answers we're looking for. We need the two answers, positive 5 and negative 5. All right, to continue on, x squared plus 64 is 0. Subtract 64 from both sides. Take the square root of both sides of the equation. The square root of x squared is, again, the absolute value of x. But the square root of 64 is going to be a predicament for us because there is no number times itself that gives us negative 64. They're in the real number system. So we must say that there are no real roots to this, solution, to this equation. All right, that brings us up to the next thing we want to look at, which is cube roots. Definition of the cube root of a number b is a solution to the equation x cubed is equal to b. Every positive number b, whether positive, negative, or 0, has exactly one real root denoted by this symbol, which is the cube root of b. In the expression, this number here, n, is called the root index the root index. When it's not written, that's when we think of it as the square root. Otherwise, when there's a number written like a 3, it would be cube root. If there was a 4, it's the fourth root, etc. All right, so let's look at our next example, the cube root of 27. We're asking ourselves what number times itself 3 times is 27. The answer to that is 3. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. 
the cube root of negative 64 well what number times itself three times is negative 64 answer to that question is negative 4 negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16 and that times negative 4 again is negative 64 the cube root of x to the 12th well what times itself three times is x to the 12th the answer to that is x to the fourth power if you had that x to the fourth power and cubed it remember a base raised to a power raised to a power you multiply 4 times 3 is the 12 alright let's look at some more vocabulary necessary to pursue roots the nth root of a number is the solution to the equation x to the n equals b if n is an even number and b is greater than zero there are two real roots of b whatever that root index n is the principal one which is the positive one is denoted by this the nth root of b if we're looking for the other one we use this notation the opposite of the nth root of b if n is even and b is zero there's only one root because the square root cube root fourth root fifth root of zero is always zero if n is even and b is less than zero there is no real root so there's no square root of negative sixteen there's also no fourth root because that's even of negative sixteen there's no sixth root or eighth root of negative any negative number if n is odd there's exactly one nth root of b whether b is positive negative or zero so to simplify what times itself four times is eighty one answer to that question is 3 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27 times 3 again is 81 what's the fifth root of 32 what times itself 5 times is 32 answer to that question is 2 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16 times 2 the fifth time is 32 what's the fifth root of negative 32 what times itself 5 times is negative 32 and that's negative 2 when you have an odd number of negatives you will end up with a negative answer what's the 17th root of negative 1 well what times itself 17 times is negative 1 that's going to be negative 1 again you have an odd number of negatives multiplied together your answer will be negative all right, so some properties of radicals we can summarize then from what we've seen. If you have the nth root of b and you raise it to the nth power, you get the root in the, the radicand b itself. Since that satisfies the equation, the nth root of b satisfies the equation x to the n equals b. So anytime you have the square root of 2 and you're going to square that, you'll end up with 2. So cube root of 8 and you're going to cube that the cubing and the cube root undo each other you're just going to be left with the radicand itself which is b in this case we're raising b to the nth power first and then taking the root you do get the base b only when n is odd however if n is even we take the absolute value of that base because we want to guarantee it's positive we want to guarantee that it's the principal root which the principal root is always looking for the non-negative values all right and to look at this chart that we have on the web page these are some numbers you should know as we go through this lesson you should know numbers from 1 to 25 and their squares and then for cubes you should know them 1 to 10 cubed for fourths 1 to 5 to the fourth power and for fifths you should be familiar with 1 to 4 raised to the fifth power so we've drawn the little lines here and extended this out if you take the time to invest in getting familiar with these numbers it'll save you time on homework and tests when you're looking for perfect squares perfect cubes perfect fourths perfect fifths and that's our introduction to looking at radicals and roots